Camp Liberty, a temporary transit site or a prison and killing field. Following the Iraqi forces attack against Ashraf on April 8, 2011, executed at Tehran's behest, and the Iraqi government's threat to carry out another massacre, Martin Kobler impelled and persuaded the residents to depart their 26-year home, which they had built through their own effort and expense during the past three decades into a city with strong infrastructure and living facilities, and transfer to a location 80 times smaller than Ashraf. Despite their insistence, the residents were never allowed to visit Liberty before their relocation and they only accepted the Liberty transfer, merely trusting the words of the special representative and his three promises on Liberty's conditions. First, Liberty meeting humanitarian standards. Second, guaranteeing the residents' safety and security. Third, speedy resettlement to third countries. Liberty's one-year record clearly proved how hollow Kobler's promises were. Status of Humanitarian Standards Despite all the efforts and expenses endured by the residents during the past year, Liberty's infrastructure remains far from international standards. The UNHCR expert report dated January 19th officially wrote Liberty neither meets refugee, WHO, or SPHERE standards. In May and August 2012, the UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, in two written opinions, described liberty as a prison. Liberty lacks the most vital asset for life, being water. Up until October, the residents were forced to spend a vast amount of energy and financial resources to transfer water with their own tankers from 12 kilometers away. Finally, the residents paid $2.5 million and were able to purchase install and start up a water purification and pumping station for the camp. Liberty lacks a widespread electricity network and the existing power generators are depreciated. The Iraqi government did not allow the residents to bring their needed power generators from Ashraf. The residents are forced to pay huge amounts of money to provide fuel for the power generators. These elements have left the residents facing continuous power outages, making conditions very difficult both in the summer and winter. All the existing roads in Liberty are dirt and very rugged, and made impassable after the winter rainfall. In the summer, due to the large sum of dust created, these dirt roads are actually a source of various illnesses. Liberty's sewage system consists of a number of tanks, of which many are out of order due to decay. Furthermore, obstructions by Iraqi government elements in emptying these tanks have led to many overflowing and contaminating the residents' living areas. This has led to the outbreak of various infectious illnesses, with more and more residents becoming ill each day. The Iraqi government has prevented the transfer of the residents' medical equipment. On the other hand, in the Iraqi clinic there are no signs of the necessary supplies for an emergency room and many other supplies found in any small clinic. A resident by the name of Mansur Kufei died on March 12th, minutes after entering the clinic, due to the lack of basic vital supplies. During the Liberty missile barrage on February 9th, the Iraqi clinic had no means to provide medical care or transfer the wounded to hospitals and the first wounded resident was transferred to a hospital with police pickup trucks two hours after the attack. Currently, the residents do not have open access to medical care. Therefore, they are practically under an intense medical siege. Security Conditions Camp Liberty, with an area of half a square kilometer, is extremely vulnerable to missile and mortar attacks. In the process of the residents' transfer to Liberty, the Iraqi government quickly removed a large number of T-walls and bunkers out of the camp. This measure was repeatedly protested by the residents and also in NCRI statements dating April 24th and September 4th, 2012, describing it as preparing the grounds for the residents' massacre. Finally, at 5.45 a.m. on February 9th, the camp was hit by 38 107-millimeter missiles. 
Six residents were killed and another lost his life due to delays in reaching a hospital. Another resident died a month later in an Iraqi hospital while he could have been transferred to Germany. 100 others were wounded and injured, of which 10 are maimed. In Ashraf, with an area 80 times larger than Liberty and its concrete buildings, numerous missile attacks and aerial bombings had left only one resident killed in 25 years. Therefore, the residents demand their return to Ashraf to protect their lives until resettlement.